Here's our second installment in our wood section of SOD. The Southern Academy of Woodworking and Environmental Design. We're talking about the basics of woodworking, which would be wood itself. And we ended our last segment on moisture content. I still want to talk more about how a tree grows. We have this example of a cross section of a tree. You see this white ring around the outside? That's called the sap wood. The inside here is called the heart wood. So when you're talking about a species of wood like walnut, it might still have a light colored sap wood all the way around it. But the heart would be Hershey bar brown because that's the color of walnut. So the sapwood eventually becomes a hardwood as it gets bigger and bigger. You know, if you were to put a horseshoe, to drive a horseshoe onto a tree or put a clothesline onto a tree when the tree was young and you came back five or ten years later, that horseshoe isn't any higher. That clothesline is not any higher. The tree doesn't grow up out of the ground. It only grows on its very tip. So if you put a horseshoe or nail a clothesline five feet off the ground, you come back 20 years later, that clothesline is still five feet off the ground. The heartwood is actually dead. It's not really alive. It is no more alive than your hair or your fingernail. It is the skeleton that the tree hangs on. Sapwoods don't have exactly the same properties as the heartwood does. All of the capillaries, all of the vessels, the sap vessels in a tree run up and down. The, there are exceptions to that in that there are some vessels that run inside of a tree that run from the heart to the bark. And those are medullary rays. The medullary, they're very prominent in uh, oak, especially quarter sawn oak. They were highly prized, especially in the 1850s. The way the water gets from the ground to the crown of the tree, it used to be thought that was through capillary action. But capillary action could not explain how water from the ground can get all the way up to the leaves in a tree that's 100 feet high. Or in the case of sequoia, it might be 500 feet high. And now they think that is actually the molecular pull of one water molecule on the other water molecule as it evaporates from the leaves. And that actually, molecular pull actually pulls that water up into the tree as it's evaporating and the sun is shining on the leaves. Now when the sun goes down, that, that water is no longer being pulled, no longer being evaporated. And that water wants to fall back down in the tree. And so the water falls back down in the tree a little bit. It keeps going down to the trunk, getting more pressure and more pressure until finally it's like a hydraulic jack or a hydraulic lift. It can lift up the sidewalk because of the weight of all that water that's been pulled up into the crown of that tree and the sun goes down and then that water wants to fall back down. And that's, that's hydraulic pressure that will make a, the root of a tree lift up the sidewalk. The only live part of the tree is the cadmium layer that's right underneath the bark. Right underneath the bark. So when you, and that's the only live part, so the tree is actually putting on more and more, it's actually growing this way, but it's not growing that way at all. The next thing I'd like to talk about is 
the way you cut boards out of a tree. You could just take the log, lay it down like this, and start slicing it this way. And that's the way it's usually done. And that's called slash cutting or mill run. And that's the way most boards are made. However, when you're slash cutting it this way, and you get to this middle board right here, this middle one right here, the, it's the shortest grain this way. So that's, they call that quarter sawed. A quarter sawed board is, board is more expensive because it doesn't expand and contract so much. And there are few quarter sawed boards in, in a log, so they're more expensive. So if you want a quarter saw uh, log, you would cut it this way and then cut it this way and then every board you slice out of those quartered section would be quarter sawed until you get out here and then you know that's no longer quarter sawed so you can either quarter saw it like that or you can slash cut it like that now the grain direction is very important here's two boards right here here you can see the grain lines going this way so that's this is up and down the tree but since it's not up and down the tree the grain is going that way so there's no chance that I can break this board this board I'd have to use a mallet or something to, to break that board I can't break it but this board the grains going in the opposite direction it's going this way woodworkers call that short grain and when you have short grain the boards easy to break I can break that with no problem at all now this particular tendency of wood to break with the grain and and be much stronger along the grain is not lost on the martial artist when they're breaking when those karate guys are breaking boards with their hands they got the grain going that direction they don't have the grain going that direction so you see they're square boards but you can always see they're breaking it this way I could probably break this one again well, I have to do it that way. And I could never do that with a, a normal board. So grain direction is very important. And remember we talked about in the first segment, when wood expands and contracts with changes in humidity, it expands, it doesn't expand lengthwise, it expands widthwise. So a board like this with a short grain is going to expand and contract much more than a, a board like this one. Now, that's the way you can slash cut a log or you can quarter saw a log. That's the way to, you, you can cut a log. But if you're, there's, woodworkers have <clears throat> named different ways to cut a board. Now, you can see that the grain on this board is going straight up and down. So this board is quarter sawed. It's a quarter sawed two by four. Now, there's normal and actual dimensions a two by four is not really two inches by four inches that uh, two by four is its nominal dimension its real dimension is uh, uh, not two but one and a half and not four but three and a half when I first started woodworking 40 years ago uh, two by fours were bigger they were one and a half by three and five eighths. They were eighth of an inch bigger. But they, they found that they could cheat and make it smaller and still didn't affect the, the strength of the house, so they're smaller now. But on a sailboat, you know that sailors name every part of the boat. So usually there's no misunderstanding when orders are given. So woodworkers do the same thing with timber or with a board. See, this may look like a, a, a normal board to you, but and this would be the face of the board, and this would be the edge of the board. But there's a heart face and a bark face, and a an heart edge and a bark edge. So if this board came out of the tree so that this is the bark on this side, then this would be the bark edge. And if you take a board into a wood shop and you want to cut that board right down the middle this way that's called a rip and if you want to cut the board across the grain this way 
is called a cross cut. So you can rip it this way, or if you cut it this way, it's a cross cut. There's a, another way you can cut it, which is that way, or cutting it that way. And that's called a resaw. So you could cross cut it, you can rip it, or you can resaw it. Now, a rip that doesn't parallel the edge. A rip that doesn't parallel the edge is called a taper. So you could see tapered legs on a table because they start out wide and end up small. So if this started out as an inch and a half here and by the time it got over here it was only one inch, then that would be a, a taper. If you can cut the corner off, a little 45 degree cut so that you're cutting the corner off of it, that's called a chamfer. And any cross cut that is not 90 degrees to the edge or that is not 90 degrees to the side of the board is called a miter. So if you were to go uh, to a picture frame corner, it would have 45 degree miters if the corner was 90 degrees. Any cross cut that's not, it's not perpendicular to the edge is a miter. A rip that is not parallel to the edge is a taper. And suppose the miter doesn't go straight down. Suppose the miter at a 45 degree angle, let's say, goes off at another angle. That's a compound miter. So it'd be something like that, where it was 45 degrees on this side and another degrees, like 30 degrees on that side. The answer to that would be, uh, or the use for that, a compound miter would be a waterbed frame. It's where the boards of the frame are angled to the floor, and that would be a compound miter on the side of that. So that's the different ways that woodworkers have come up with to cut a board. Remember, a board just doesn't have a face. It has a heart face and a bark face. It just doesn't have an edge. It has a heart edge and a bark edge. There's a few other little jargon uh, words that you might want to be familiar with if you're beginning a woodworker, and that is, suppose we're cross-cutting this board right here, and you take a saw and you start cutting into the board. The line that the saw leaves in the board when it cuts the board is wider than the saw blade is because the teeth in the saw are set a little to the left and every other tooth is set to the right so that the line that it cuts is wider than the blade is. If, it, if you didn't do that, then the saw would always bind into the wood. So the set uh, is, uh, is always important when you're sharpening a saw, so you make sure that the line that it leaves in the wood is wider than the blade. And the width of that line is called the kerf. A kerf has two sides. It has the scrap side and it has the work side. So every little, every little area of a board is, is named in woodworking. I don't want to get into a lot of the different joints because that's a whole nother lesson. But just the cuts of the board are all named. And the direction of the grain is, is extremely important. That this way is not very strong at all, and that way is the strongest. Wood is actually the strongest building material per weight uh, of anything that man has come up with. I'm not so sure that even the new man-made boards and even the new honeycomb boards and foam boards are any stronger than natural wood. It's always been a material that man has used since he cr crawled out of the cave. So every Monday... You can come back to the SOD channel, S-A-W-E-D, SOD.
It stands for the Southern Academy of Woodworking and Environmental Design. It's free school.